Hey guys, welcome to episode four. Can you believe it? Four episodes. Four. Four times four. you guys have asked us questions. Four. And it is growing. We have a lot of questions yeah. today. Month of July, so it makes sense. It's pretty active. Yep. Let's start it off. By the way, she's the novice. Oh yeah, I'm the novice. <laughs> I'm just asking the questions. Okay. Is there any way to get rid of wild morning glory? My lawn is covered. Yeah, so mild morning glory. Sometimes it's the violets that you'll be having in there. Uh, is there any easy way to get rid of them? Uh, under the new cosmetic pesticide ban, the ban that we've had here in Ontario for several years, there really isn't anything that can be a quick solution. Uh, the other solution that you have to do is start over. So if your lawn's 50% covered by weeds, if it is anything like violets or anything like that, you're better off to tear that up, start over and saw it over. I wish there was a better solution. The other solution is hand removal if you just have a few. Keeping your lawn the thickest, the healthiest, the most vibrant, making sure you're fertilizing it a few times of the year and overseeding, that's the best way. Raise those lawnmower blades up as well in the summer months, that'll shade out any weed seeds. Okay, cool. And that's also, maybe if you can't get rid of them, you're helping the bees. Yeah, yeah, there when it go. comes to dandelions and things like that, a lot of the times, extra pollen sources for bees. Yeah. Okay, this one we are talking about in through July, but let's touch on it quickly. Yep. I keep getting squirrels digging through my flower pots. What's a humane way to keep them out of there? Yeah, so we're going to be showing you one of the uh, little tips here, how we're going to use a fork to take care of them. But think about this. This is what I always say when it comes to squirrels, raccoons, rabbits. Play with their senses. What they don't like to hear, what they don't like to see, what they don't like to touch, what they don't like to taste, what they don't like to smell. A reminder, old gardeners, to keep rabbits away from their vegetable gardens, used to take the time to pee around the outside of their vegetable garden to keep rabbits out. So, take a look at our squirrel, and I'm going to show you how to put a fork in it to keep them away. So, next one, do all bushes require different months for pruning? Uh, yeah, it depends. So, general rule of thumb, prune after they bloom. You'll never fail. So, after something finishes its flower period, prune, you'll be great. Uh, but some things you got to watch out for. Say, for instance, the lilacs. If I prune the lilac, in the fall, I'll remove next year's flower buds. So that's really important. If something is spring blooming, you don't want to prune it in the fall. If it's summer bl blooming, you can prune it in the spring and then it'll initiate blooms. But prune after bloom and you'll never fail. It's always good to have those limericks to help yeah. you along, that's yeah. for sure. Yeah. Okay, the next one, I bought a hydrangea four years ago. Right. It had lots of blooms the first year, but hasn't bloomed since. And they're asking, should they be feeding it something? I say get rid of it. Yeah. Get rid of it! Yeah, and the reason for that, there are different varieties of hydrangea that are out there that are really not that performing that well. You get lots of foliage and they don't put any blooms. If you've tried done work over the last three years and it hasn't performed, let's get rid of that and put a better variety in. What are some good varieties of hydrangea? New one called Invincible, fantastic. It's a white. Uh, the other one, Limelights, it's cone-shaped flower with chartreuse green, awesome. And then the Galaxy, which are the everlasting series of hydrangeas, blues and pinks. Fantastic. So go for those ones and get rid of the one that's not performing. So Francis sent us a question asking us about a strange fungus or bug growing on Black Eyed Susan. Okay. Can you tell us about this one? Yeah, so it looks like it's a little bit of a black spot that he has on his Black Eyed Susan, which is Rutabecchia. Best thing to do with that is just kind of remove those flowers. With the amount of moisture that we saw in the spring in the month of, uh, and, and through the months of uh, June and May, uh, a lot of diseases out there. Airflow through the garden will really help with that. Removing those leaves off will really help. And if you really want, you can put a fungicide down to really kind of clear those up. But with Rutabecchia, which is the Black Eyed Susan, they're so resilient. Just clean them up a bit, they'll be fine. So we've gotten so many comments throughout July. It is a big growing season. So these are the ones we are answering in part one. We're actually making part two because you are so engaged and we love all the comments you left. Yeah, and in part two, I'll be wearing the same shirt. Hey!